Who is Lamarck and who is Darwin? And why are they important in biology? Well, every great theory had its predecessor. And Darwin's great theories of natural selection had its predecessor, Lamarck, and many others. <clears throat> this well-known theoretical battle in evolutionary biology continued to help foster ideas about evolutionary biology well after this debate was thought to be concluded. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the battle between Lamarck and Darwin, and how these individuals contributed so greatly to our understanding of mechanisms of evolution. First, what did Lamarck accomplish for the scientific community? Well, he fueled the religious, um, uh, sorry, religiously uh, invoked controversial debate of the day regarding evolution. Believers of religion of Lamarck's time in Lamarck's time shunned anyone who believed that organisms were anything but a pro product of miraculous interventions and a reflection of God's design. Neither Lamarck nor Darwin tried to dispro disprove God, ho however. Rather, they tried to propose naturalist theories okay, that would expand people's minds about the awesome nature of God's work. Religious believers at the time, however, didn't really quite buy it. So off Lamarck went, trying to explain the convincing similarities that organisms displayed. And he tried to explain how organisms were not fixed, how much they uh, changed gradually over time. First, he explained that changes over time occurred due to something called use and disuse. Use and disuse was basically a theory that the more an organism or limb was needed due to changing environmental pressures, um, the more that it would increase in number. So let's put environment here. So this is important later. He also stated that organisms were driven to become more and more complex, that new life forms could be com 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 created, excuse me, um, such as microorganisms um, from simpler ones. Um, and he theorized that ultimately this would happen throughout time, that everything would be um, driven by greater complexity. He made no mention of, dis of extinction, rather that organs that the uh, organism stopped using would shrink due to its disuse. So if a monkey no longer used its tail, then it would start to fade in the population. He said that any newly acquired trait, such as a monkey's tail, um, if they acquired it throughout their lifetime through the use and greater stretching of the tail, they would then be passed on to their, their offspring, so passed down. And he said that there were innate differences in our natural environments that influence change, such as these giraffes here. Some trees would be located higher up, and some trees used to be located lower down when the trees that were lower down to the ground um, died and the only leaves that the giraffes could eat were higher up, he imagined and stated that the giraffes would stretch their necks and that due to this stretching, this is important, um, on a bird's beak or on their legs, getting longer because they needed to, so stretching out of need, that was his theory, that they did this because they needed to, to escape from predators or to, or to get food. So when you think of stretching or need for a trait, think of Lamarck. Darwin, on the other hand, recognized certain aspects of um, Lamarck's theories as significant um, in that he was proposing some really controversial ideas of the time. But there were many differences between what um, Darwin and Lamarck outlined in their theories. Darwin's theory of natural selection, as he called his theory of evolution, involved four principles. These principles would be expanded upon later when molecular biologists began to study genes, but for now they include, at his time,
variations. Um, he definitely included some uh, mindful thoughts about extinction, but his theory really included variations, heritability or inheritance, selective pressure, and Um, and many, many generations. I'll add that here. Okay. So what was he really trying to say about evolution? Um, Darwin started with the idea, and we will expand upon these four um, principles in another video, but he basically stated that there were inherent variations in populations. Let's take the finches that he um, saw on the islands of the Galapagos across um, off of Ecuador. He saw that there were inherent variations in populations of birds, as in every species there were inherent variations or differences. He explained that ultimately evolution was the idea that um, a population would um, be uh, that would be more likely to reproduce had the traits that best suited their environment. This was called survival of the fittest. Um, I'll put that here. Um, so survival of the fittest basically stated that organisms that were best suited to their environment, thus that just happened to have the traits that suited their environment, would carry um, would pass on those traits to the next to the next generation. And over many, many, many generations, you would either A, create a new species, or B, um, the, the, um, that organism would go extinct because it wouldn't, that trait would not benefit it and it would not be reproductively successful. Um, in summary, and we'll go into more depth into Darwin's theories in another video, but in summary, both Lamarck and Darwin opposed any sort of theory that organisms were fixed throughout a lifetime, that there, that there was no change. They both agreed that there must be change. But they contended as far as how organisms changed over time. So, so um, you know, before scientists really were able to study genes, you could say that both Lamarck and Darwin made some very considerable strides in evolutionary theory. At the very least, um, they made it their, their life's work to study and attempt to convince others about the fact of evolution. But at the time, the more convincing, um, the more convincing theory definitely, definitely tends to be um, Darwin, however, religious believers back then had a very difficult time with this.